Hey guys, if you're up to the task of DIYing a Tesla wall connector, make sure you know all these tips coming up. So here's my list of tips that you probably want to follow just to make sure you have everything as much to code as possible and that way you have the cleanest install possible. So let's get to them. Hey guys, so here's the information part of the video. So basically I'm just gonna to try to give you as much information as I can about doing this correctly so you don't start a fire or anything like that if you're a DIYer because this types of stuff I've noticed, nobody ever talks about this and what kind of like safety and code and things like that that you need to look for when you're doing something like this. So the first one for me is the wiring. There's a ton of misinformation about wiring, especially when you're doing a 60 amp breaker on the wall connector. So for me, what I did is I used the 6AWG THHN, which is very common uh, for this install. And so that's the wiring here, which is basically just wiring in insulation. And the reason why there's a lot of misinformation is because basically a lot of people will be like, oh, you can just use six gauge, six uh, AWG Romex is what they're usually referring to, or uh, NMB, which is the same thing as Romex, and that's this here. So basically what that is, is that sheathed, uh, it's a four four wire sheathing basically. So this is actually uh, amp wise only good for a 50 amp breaker. And so basically if you put this on a 60 amp breaker and you're pushing 48 amps, you're probably gonna end up melting the insulation on these wires at some point and causing a fire. So uh, if you look at uh, Tesla's instructions, it says use minimum six AWG at 90 degrees Celsius rated copper. And so basically the six gauge THHN is rated uh, at 90, 90 degrees. So if we go to an amp chart here, right here is the 90 degree rating. If we look at the six gauge here, it's rated up to 75 amps, which is obviously higher than the 60 amp breaker. So you're good there. And even at 75 degrees, it's 65 amps. So that's still good. Now, the reason there's a lot of debate is because at 60 degrees, it's only rated for 55 amps. And you should be okay with the six gauge. I mean, even look at Tesla's instructions here. It says uses six gauge at 90 degrees. So as you can see, we, we know it's 75. However, if you're pushing 48 amps, that's pretty close to 55. So I guess there's a slight chance you could melt the insulation, but even still, it's still rated higher than 48 amps. So you should be okay, but there'll be some people will say, oh, it's not rated high enough because of this 60 degree column. If you notice in the 60 degree column, there is no THHN, so it's not rated for that. So it's, anyway, it's a big debate. So the, the point is, if you wanna be on the super, super safe side, you can use four gauge. So four gauge at 60 degrees is rated at 70 amps. So again, that's higher than 60 amps, so you're good there. You can also use four gauge Romex or NMB you can use 4.2 Romex, and that's that same thing where it, that one is also rated over 60 amps. I don't know the exact amp for that because THHN and Romex are rated differently. So 6-gauge Romex is not rated at 75. It's a lot lower. It's like under, It's I think it's 55 or something like that. Anyway, so the point is you, you can use 4-gauge Romex and you're good. However, Four gauge wiring in general is very hard to find. Uh, I don't even think my home, my local Home Depot had any four gauge wiring uh, in any color. And so obviously you wanna use green, black and red if you can, but I don't think they had any color in this because it's very hard to find. On top of that, it's very expensive as well. So that's why I just went with the six gauge and you know it says it's fine in the Tesla manual. So I'm okay with that. And I just monitor it to make sure it's okay. If you are gonna use THHN wiring, uh, by code, you're required to put it in some type of conduit. Don't just throw it in the wall because there's no protection. So I use LFNC, which is this. This is the light, liquid tight, non-metallic, flexible conduit. So this is okay. You can use whatever basic conduit you want, I think. Uh, that includes metal conduit, so metal flex conduit you can use. You can use PVC conduit, or you can use EMT, which is the metal conduit that you normally see on the outside of houses. So. Any conduit is fine. Make sure that your THHN is inside conduit. If you're using Romex, if you're putting that inside the wall, 
you don't need to use uh, conduit because it's sheathed. So that's the protection for, for the insulation on the wiring. But again, I'm using THHN, so I need conduit. So as you remember in the video, this is us putting the conduit in the wall. So I'm measuring the, the basically the distance that I need uh, for the actual like for the actual length of the conduit, and then I'm going to cut it uh, after we figure out the actual length, and then you know put the wiring through with the fittings. Another important tip that nobody ever mentions for some reason is you need to torque your wires. So every breaker has a specific torque spec for the size wiring. So it's a little bit hard to see. So it says six and four gauge here. For this particular breaker is 45 inch pounds. Now make sure you torque your wires on both sides. So breaker side will have it. And then also the wire box has a you know spec as well. So the spec for the wire box is 50 inch pounds. So make sure you torque the wire box side to 50 inch pounds per spec. Another tip I've never seen anybody mention is the insulation. So you know, everyone always talks about stripping the insulation to the right length. That's great and all, but on top of that, you also want to make sure that you don't have any insulation in the terminal or in the lug specifically. So as you can see here, you can see just a little bit of insulation is sticking out of the terminal. And that's because I want to make sure that there's no insulation going to be that's going to be torqued down on the lug. Because if that happens, that's going to melt and then you're going to start a fire that way. So. I like doing it like this where you can just see a little bit of it just to make sure you know you're good. So also on the other side as well, I have just a little bit of, uh, you know, bare copper sticking out of the terminal to make sure that I know there's no insulation in there. And for the wire box, this is fine because you've got these uh, dividers here. And so as long as there's insulation, uh, you know, on top of the divider, then you're good. So same thing on the bottom here. Uh, copper is not extending past the, the divider, so you're good. You don't have to worry about anything. That's why they have these dividers here, just for extra safety to make sure you don't have wire touching each other and that'll cause a fire or explosion or something too. And then same thing on the breaker side as well. So I have just a little bit of insulation sticking out of the terminal, so I know that the the lug is not does not have any insulation on it. So when I torque it down, uh, there's no insulation and you don't, know, risk melting the insulation, causing a fire down the road. When you're stripping your uh, wire, make sure that you don't nick the stranded copper. So you can see that it's like totally clean. There's no nicks or anything on it. And the reason why this is, is because if you need to take out the wiring later or something and you need to bend it and things, if you have nicks on the wire, then that there's a chance that you can actually break off that piece of stranded copper and that would not be good. So, you know, I basically, I think the goal is you don't want to do that because like when I think about it, when you put the lug on this and you torque it down, it's going to tear the crap out of the, uh, the copper. So uh, basically try not to do the nicks that way. If you do need to redo it later, uh, it's not going to, you know, you won't break a piece off down here or something if you need to redo it. So that's why you don't want to have nicks because there's that chance down the road. When you're wiring up the box here, uh, be very careful and make sure that you keep the wires away from the sliding contacts here. So mainly it's this here, this uh, point. I don't know why Tesla did this. They should have rounded this to make it safer, but that's probably why they have the zip tie to basically zip it into the zip tie anchor here and keep the wires away from these sliding contacts. So this one here is right here. So make sure you keep your wiring away from that. So basically these wires are thick enough where you can push them and bend them how you want and they'll stay like that you know, because it's a decently thick wire. So just make sure you push it as far away as you can from these sliding contact edges because you know when you heat up wires and things, they do move a little bit because of all that power going through it. And so uh, if, you're, if it's too close, there's a chance that the insulation starts rubbing on these here. Then you know where that goes rubbing insulation, bare copper shows that you start a fire. So make sure you keep those as far away as possible so they don't touch. This is more important when you're turning the breakers back on, but what you wanna do is turn them on one at a time. And basically why you wanna do that is just because uh, you wanna turn the power on slowly because you don't wanna surge the power through your uh, breaker box all at once because that could cause a fire or explosion or something. So just make sure you do them one at a time. So it's nice and slow and you don't surge anything. Another thing you wanna do when you're turning these breakers back on is don't stand right in front of the box, stand away. So stand to the side of the box 
and use your non-dominant hand to turn the breakers on. So that way, if there is some sort of explosion or something, you hurt your non-dominant hand. So you still have your dominant hand to do things in the interim until you, you know, heal. When you're ready to get your wiring all set up, make sure you wire the load side first. So basically that's going to be, in this case, the wire box. So wire this side up first and then do the breaker side. And the reason for that is you don't want to put in your breaker, even though it's off, maybe there's something that's wrong with it or something like that, or you forget to turn off your panel or something and you accidentally energize your breaker, even though you think it's off. And then you start working on the load side and then you shock yourself. So by doing the load side first, you can't do that because there's going to be no power on the line side, your breaker side to even be able to do that. So normally that's what you want to do is start with the load side first. I've seen a lot of people have issues with commissioning, me and, me included. And so I don't know why Tesla made this so complicated. You know, being that they're a tech company, this should be like the easiest part. So anyways, there's a couple of common uh, fixes that may help you. So if you're on that screen where you're in the IP address and it just spins forever, uh, it's funny because Tesla says right here, WPA2 security is what the wall connector is good for. But today, most, a lot of routers have WPA3. And so that's usually one of the problems where basically your router is on WPA3, the wall connector is looking for WPA2 and they don't connect and that's why it spins forever. So make sure you turn your router to WPA2 or just turn it off entirely for you know a few minutes so you can connect to your Wi-Fi and you should be good. Uh, another fix you could try is putting your phone on airplane mode and then doing the commissioning process. I've read that that actually works too a lot of the time. So try one of those two things. Hope you'll be able to get your commission done a lot faster and easier than most people. So you're going to want to use a step bit to make that hole in the back of the wire box if you want to put the conduit in the wall. So since we're using on my install three quarters of an inch of conduit, uh, you can use a one and one ace step bit to drill the hole in the wire box. And then you also saw I kind of made the hole bigger or you could have just used the step bit to just drill a hole in the wall if you wanted to. Depends how much you care about your step bits because these things are kind of expensive, the nice ones anyway. And you don't want to be putting it through walls and stuff because it wears them out. So what I found out when we were dabbling around at Home Depot for like an hour was I was looking for an adapter because I have a 3 ace drive impact driver. So I was looking for an adapter to fit this into my impact driver because it's the chuck here was too big and we're trying all these parts and the guy didn't know what he was talking about. So we wasted a ton of time. Uh, but the problem was, is my impact driver, this particular chuck for these things is like a custom size. And so there's no adapters you can buy. You can't buy like a three ace adapter or like a five sixties adapter to put it into your three ace drive impact driver. And so what you need to do is you need to have a power drill that actually has an adjustable chuck. So luckily my dad had one, so we use that instead. But if I had a drill like this, not an impact driver, then this thing can go whatever custom size you want. And then you just put the bit right in there and you're good to go. So I didn't know that. So hopefully this will help you save time by knowing you need to get either a power drill, that you need to get a power drill basically to make this work. Um, or else you're just gonna be you know, spinning your wheels at Home Depot forever. And last tip is for breakers. So basically, most breakers come with these little metal pieces that go over the blades that actually go into the service panel. So they go right over this part here. And so basically, if you don't take these off before you try to put your breaker in your breaker panel, you're never gonna get it in because basically these this part here uh, stops the actual breaker from going into the service panel and actually you know getting energized from the panel. So <laughs> make sure you take these off first before you try to put your breaker on and you're never gonna get your breaker on. So that's all the tips I have. Hopefully that video, the tutorial was helpful. Hopefully these tips are helpful. And hopefully you can do a DIY wall connector yourself successfully. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And thanks for watching.